Who wants to? What? You. <laughs> you already did it. <laughs> yeah, you already did it. Well, that is your turn. You talk too much. <laughs> so that's All right, the last two? Yeah, I think it's... Basically. Oh, no, everybody else arrived. I can put up some slides if you want to. Friday or Thursday, Thursday evening, yeah. Something. Yeah. Um, so we talked about how, uh, why you might do alignments. Um, identifying, I guess the main reason would just be trying to identify like the homology and how you can look through like the ancestry and maybe how sequences are related or um, so on. We talked about how there's pretty much two main ways in which you can have said homology, one would be speciation, and the other is uh, gene duplication. And so it's maybe kind of a challenge when you're looking at why they're aligned to understand um, which type of alignment it could be. But the, the alignments are going to be the same, but of course, without knowing where they come from right. and, and the, the relationship between the organism, you can't, I mean, you can't even guess. But even if you know that, it can be difficult. To so identify like the but we, 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 Yeah, we talk more about that next week, I think. Um, and then we just kind of briefly touched on convergent evolution sort of being a thing here. Um, like how we're talking about like the bats and their wings versus the bees and their wings, so it's kind of important to understand. I guess sequences could sort of function in the same way and again, sort of just get where they're coming from and why. Um, and then we kind of moved on to identify an alignment as well as the two different types. So there's the local and the global. Um, and um, then we, after talking about that, we sort of just talked about the, uh, the types of scoring that you're applying to the alignments and why you would do it and like these dot plots and um, just kind of understanding how these work when you're comparing sequences. And for the local sequences, you're just going to kind of compare um, the best matching. And for the global, you want to align whatever you can. And then once you kind of understand how you have these sort of things aligned, I suppose you would want to move on to doing different types of matrices or calculations to understand um, this score value and are your results significant or not? Um, you know, trying to make sure, yeah, that you have the best alignment possible, as well as um, making sure it's, you know, statistically valid and significant. And that, um, Let's see what else. We talked about the different types of matrices you can use, like the PAM and the BLOSUM. Um, kind of talked about the um, similarities and differences, and it seems like we'll kind of come back to that little part later. But yeah, we talked about how to read these um, these plots and kind of understand where your score value is coming from. And then um, well, we talked a bit about just sort of why this scoring is necessary, like why you can't just throw a bunch of stuff together and have gaps all the time. Um, I think gaps obviously cost you, and you have to factor that into your <coughs> results later on. Um, 
Yeah. That was, yeah. I think, I guess you skipped the optimal alignment part. Oh, <laughs> So, dynamic programming, basically. But otherwise, that was a good summary of the first lecture, at least. Very good summary. I guess this was the part that... You're all, this is kind of the key concept anyway, to, to understand how you do an alignment. That is actually... And how, that you can find, that you can match uh, this kind of... Can, I mean, an alignment can be represented as a path to a matrix also. So these are the same thing. Okay, so who wants to continue on the second lecture? Yeah. Um, yep. Okay. <laughs> so in the second lecture we discuss um, beyond dynamic programming, which two algorithms have been actually implemented when you want to align uh, a sequence to really big databases, because we said that so dynamic programming is feasible, but it is not efficient when you want to yeah, try to search in a database that may have 1 million or 10 million sequences. And uh, so, yeah, these algorithms are, mm, I would say they are not strictly, so they don't strictly guarantee that you're getting the best possible alignment, but we have, uh, yeah, we have factual evidence that they are working, so we just use them. <laughs> Well, not, not only functional evidence, but uh, yeah, of course, it's, you can probably calculate the pro well, the probability you miss the best alignment is uh, not very high. But uh -huh. yeah, anyway, you can, well, I guess you can, you can, you can never guarantee it, but it's, uh, so, anyway, it's probably for a very unrelated patch of proteins, you might not find the best alignment. But the probability you miss something that is, that is actually two related proteins that are very similar is very low. I mean, you, because they're always going to have these paths that are parts that are that are parts of the. I mean, the good, a good alignment is going to have parts that are similar to each, paths of I mean, as that are similar to each other. And so, then, so these two algorithms were FASTA and afterwards BLAST, and uh, yeah, FASTA is basically based on trying to avoid unnecessary calculations that are performed outside of the diagonal. So, yeah, we kind of came back to this dot plus, and so you find um, the main diagonals, and you try to align them somehow, so apply this dynamic algorithm to these main uh, diagonals that you have, and kind of work out which is the best core for them in that mm -hmm. particular area. So you get rid of the extremes the upper right corner and the lower left corner of the plot and you just don't have to calculate that. And yeah, this is <laughs> basically it. Yeah. And then BLAST is like a, yeah, FASTA 2.0, so it's a best version of it based on something different actually, because it is based on finding seeds within the sequence. So starting from a random position and trying to expand the alignment in both directions and finding, so yeah, going until your uh, some kind of a statistical score you have uh, actually goes down. So the alignment is not improving by actually expanding it. And then, yeah, so you find these sets uh, for all the sequences and then you compare their scores in in a statistical manner, so we talk about this p value and e value for the likelihood of finding a hit that it is better than the actually that, that the one that you've actually found. Meaning that if you have a an e value that is really, really low, it means that there is a yeah, very small probability that you find that there is actually another uh, hit that is better than yours. So you can be kind of sure that. Your in particular, it, it, it's very unlikely that this hit is caused by uh, some random changes or random data hits. Yeah. So, yeah. And you can still have lower ones if you have something more similar, but that's but not by random. Yeah. 
you also saw this distribution of the e value, which is like yeah, maybe yeah, this one. So for the when you get a very low e value, you're supposedly so you're supposed to have a score that it is very right in that graph, meaning that yeah. is yeah very low probability that you, there is actually another best score that your score has been obtained randomly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to calculate. Well, you, you need a few parameters in optimize, but you can basically calculate what is the probability that this would happen by chance. This is actually this formula really only holds for ungapped alignments, but you use it anyway for gapped alignments also. But it's, but it's I think the other paper showed that it's basic a uh, good approximation there also. But in f formal it only hold, holds for ungapped alignments. But, but the experience tells you that it, it looks the same, yeah. Is E a variable, or is it times 10 to the? No, it's, it's the, the natural logarithm. Oh. So the, uh, well, the, the uh, natural uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. E. Yeah. So, so it's. Yeah. What was what? The base for the natural logarithm. Yeah. Yeah. So these e values, we're going to go back to later because it's, it's talking about how also, I mean, nowadays when you have biology with huge data sets, it's very, very important. And particularly, I mean, in the genome sequence and data things, you're going to have you're going to be very, very uh, crucial to match things correctly. And you're going to always have statistical significant, I mean, things with good scores by sporadic because you have. 100 million reads, so we have lots of short sequences they are going to match. And how, how, how do you match, match them perfect? And how do you separate a single mutation that is really relevant from a single mutation that actually is just a read error or it's, 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 it's a lot of statistical problems? So you have to be very careful. <coughs> okay, you know something else? Yeah, we, after this we talked a bit about. Um, yeah, so some considerations or things to keep in mind when you perform an alignment regarding this uh, low complexity regions and also, um, I don't know. So, uh, this is just what we said about it. the E value is, it's not calculated for each pair of sequences, it's calculated for your search against the database. So if you have a big database, you actually need a better score to find a significant hint. Because it's just by random, you're going to find more hits with, uh, with the same score because the database is bigger. And so uh, there was an example here that here you have the e value of 10 to minus 1, but in the big database, it was only 10 to minus 2, basically. 10 to minus 3 to 10 to minus 2. Okay, one even. Because this is a big database. It doesn't mean that this, this hit is wrong, it just means that it's not significant, so you, or at least on a borderline significant. But you know, there's a lot of hits here that have about 10% chance to occur by random. But of course, the probability that all these actually are random is very low, then, because of course they are. Uh, probability you have one of these happens to, to be a. It's only ten. So if you run ten different sequences that are not related, you're going to get one score that hit that is random. So most of these are, are most likely correct. But often you want to be a bit conservative and you don't want to risk the bad that hits. So we also said that sometimes you need to mask out regions like this. They occur and they cause problems with the alignments. So you have done. There's some of you did the lab yesterday. The last FOSS, the sticker search lab, didn't you? But only half the group, I think. So that worked. Yeah. Okay. Let's stop that. Okay. So let me. <coughs> 